Hello folks, welcome to our canal channel Jose. Today we're gonna show you, give you an idea how to replace the wheel cylinder on a 91 to 99 Toyota Tercel or a 92 to 99 Toyota Paseo. So what these cylinders do, they actually are the ones that when you press a pedal, these actually expand and they make those uh, brake shoes to actually get against the drum and create friction so it slows down the car. So there's one per tire on the rear, the front are different. There's a different system on the front, they're disc brakes, but today we're working on the rear. So we're gonna show you how easy it is to replace them so you don't have to take them to shops and get, and pay a lot of money for this job that is actually the part cost you about $19 or even cheaper. With that said, let's jump right into it and we'll show you how easy this replacement can be. So now that we have taken off a wheel, we have our part number, which is 3387 for the passenger side wheel brake cylinder and we're gonna be taking or releasing our e-brake so we can get this uh, drum off so we can ex change the uh, cylinder which is right in there and even though the transmission is on gear and the front wheels are on the ground we still secure it so it doesn't roll while we're working on this wheel now that the e-brake is off we're gonna take the drum off and to take out the drum, we have to remove this uh, cover. Uh, there, there's a locking mechanism with the uh, nut that holds that uh, drum against the spindle. So now we have to remove this cutter pin, and then we have to remove this locking device that keeps the nut from spinning. So cutter pin, lock, and then the nut. And now this nut right here is a 22 millimeter socket needed, and it's not going to be too tight. So now what we can do is we can pull the drum straight out carefully. There's a washer and a bearing here that might fall off. So be careful on that, not to get dirt on that. And then once we pull it off, we can expose a braking system where the cylinder is. So now that you have uncovered a braking system, what you want to do is you want to compare what you bought to what's in here before you start taking stuff apart. Because if it's not the same, then that way you can just put everything back together and then you can go and exchange it for the right part. But uh, this is what we need to replace. This is the cylinder that we are going to put in. So this is exactly what's in there. So as you can see, one hole, there's one hole right there. This uh, hump here is that hump right there. So there in the other side, it will be facing. This is one bolt. There's another bolt that go in there. This is the brake line that goes in here, right there. We put the cover back on so it doesn't, no debris gets in there. And then this is the purging or the bleed off for the air. So this has to be up. So now that we know that we're getting the right part and we're going to be taking off this guy. So we have to take off the, the brake line off. And then we have to lose the tension on these uh, brakes. So we can, uh, once we unbolt it, that can come off. So now, first thing we do is we have to take off the tension of the brake shoes being pulled in, which is done by this bar that goes all the way around. And if we don't take this off, the brakes are going to be always trying to collapse and they're pushing against the cylinder. We can't afford that. So we have to take that guy off and that way we can start undoing the back of it. So first thing we have to do is we have to unhook it from the bottom right here. And then we have to undo it from the brake shoes. First, we do this bottom here. So now that we have undone the bottom, we can pull this forward or that one to the back. So, and then once it kind of pulls, then we can slide it outwards. So it unhooks from the brake shoe. So now the, the brake shoes are not touching against the cylinder. What we're going to have to do now is we can come over here and disconnect our brake line and then undo the 10 millimeter two bolts that are in the back. So we go in the back and here is a brake line. Here's a 10 millimeter bolt and here's another 10 millimeter bolt that hold the cylinder. So we take out the brake line first and then the two 10 millimeter bolts. So now we have put a container so we can catch any oil that drips out of the line or the piston 
And then one thing as well is that once you have taken the drum off of the, the structure, you don't want to press the brakes because what's going to happen, there's little components that are going to fly out because of the hydraulic pressure. And then you're going to have oil everywhere and components that shouldn't come off that they have come off because you press the brakes. So at this point, once you remove the drum, don't press any brakes. So now to remove that nut, the flare nut, we're using a special tool or special tool, which is the flare nut wrench. So we actually don't round it up because they're hollow. So these, these are made for this kind of job. So now that we have the tool, we got to remove it. And it's a 10 millimeter nut that, it, that in a, a 10 millimeter wrench that we have to use for this job. So now that we have removed the brake line, we can remove the, 10, the two 10 millimeter bolts so we can then push or extract the cylinder towards where the brake shoes are. Now that we have removed the brake line and the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the piston, we can remove the piston from the spot. And that's where the two 10 millimeter bolts are bolted on into the cylinder through the back. So now that the 10 millimeter bolts are gone and then the brake line is unhooked, it's, un, it's not bolted on, we can get a hammer and tap it from the back so it can come off. And at the same time, be careful with the brake shoes because once it comes off, you can turn it a little bit and then bring it out. This is the old cylinder that we took off, and here's a new one. Same thing, but this is a newer, clean, ready to be installed. So we start installing this guy. So now this one has to be vertical to the this side. So that's where the brake shoe is going to fall in and guide when it needs to be pushed out and all. This is the guide for it. So we turn it. And we adjust that as well, vertical. Get our cylinder, we start feeding it through it slowly, and then work it in there. Now that it's sat, we put that two 10 millimeter bolts in the back to hold it. So now that we have the cylinder in there, just still loose, we tighten those two 10 millimeter bolts and then we can start putting our brake line back in. So now we have put the two 10 millimeter bolts, we tighten them, now we can get our brake line put it in and bolt it on. So now we have threaded this into the pit, into the little cylinder. And one thing we wanna say that is very important about these flare nuts is that if you don't thread them all the way as much as you can by hand, and then, because if you thread it one or two threads and it gets, it's cross threaded and then you put the tool on it, it's gonna have a, it's gonna be a pain. It's gonna be a headache. You're gonna have to change this or you're gonna damage something. So you wanna thread it as much as you can by hand and then you can pull tools into it. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day. So now that we have put the piston in, the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the piston against the structure, the brake line into it and tightening it with a flare nut tool or wrench. Now we put the piston and we make sure that these are guided to where the brake shoes fall in in both sides. So they gotta be vertical cuts. So now that we have done that, now we can put the tension. So then the brakes come in together against the piston. Once we do that, we gotta put the drum back on, secure it, put everything back to normal. And then we got to bleed off the air out of this piston, but we have to do that once that drum is back on because we have to press the brakes. We don't want to do that while this is open. So otherwise things will come off. So we're going to put that drum and then bleed off the air.
So as you could see, we hook the the tensioner on that side like this, and then before we pull, we gotta guide our our adjustment. We gotta guide our, our adjustment right into that group. And once we do that, we pull and push the brake as in as well, and then hook it to that hole. So you're pulling and pushing and guiding this at the same time so that can go right in there. The piston might be guided, but if you this guy is out of the alignment or is not in there, set in there, that's gonna be falling off, and then the brakes are gonna come in too close that then you won't be able to brake or you're gonna be having issues. Make sure that this guide is right into the groove and over here as well. It, it's probably gonna fall off of here first before over here. So then we guide it, we put that tensioner, then we can clip and secure the bottom point that keeps it from flopping around. So we do that and then we put the drum. Now we can put our uh, drum and now the bearing and the outer washer that keeps the bearing in. Now the nut that holds everything together. So now that you have tightened it by hand, you grab your 22 millimeter. And then what I do, I just tighten it and give it about a quarter turn. And there it is. So now all we put is a locking device and the cutter pin. Now we put the cover back on and we cap it so it falls right in. So now that we have put everything together, you spin this so it feels good. Nothing bonding, nothing scratching. So now that we have the cylinder in there, everything's ready to go. Now we have to take the air or purge the air out of the system. So for to do that on the old system, on the old piston, we're going to show you where we're going to be doing it on the new one. So this little nipple, we're going to be using a flare nut tool to loosen this. And then we're going to have a hose in here going to a bottle. And then somebody's going to be pressing the brake pedal while we do this as well. So it's a two-person process. So we're going to show you how we do it, and then um, that way uh, we finish the whole process and you get an idea how this replacement goes from start to finish. To loosen this uh, bleed off nipple, we're going to be using a 516 wrench. So now we have our little bottle, or hose, or wrench, and the hose into the nipple. So what we're going to be doing is that that's going to be catching the oil because it's going to be spitting with pressure. So that then what we're going to be doing is another person is going to be in the pedal. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to tell the person to press the pedal. When they're pressing the pedal, we're going to loosen and open this so the pressure releases. That person cannot let go of that pedal while this is open. We got to tighten it back up and then we can tell them, okay, release the pedal. Once they release the pedal, they can then we tell them, press the pedal. They press the pedal and then we release the pressure again. With, with them pressing the pedal so they cannot let go of the pedal while this is open otherwise it's going to absorb air into the system and we don't want that we want to get air out not air in so let's uh, do the process it's going to be a repetition of a couple of times because the air that is stuck in the line and then the piston is going to have to fill in so let's uh, get the air out of this system oh, release press Release, press, release, press. Okay, release. So now that we have taken the air out, we tighten the nut, we tighten the nipple. And then we put the plug that comes with it back on so dirt don't get in there. And then we can start putting the tire back on. Now what we did is we pressed our brakes a few times so then the, all the air will be pushed out. And we got all this little oil out of there after the air. So this needs to be flushed. And we're going to be flushing the brake system on this car. And we're going to have another video about that, how we do that. So for today, we already got the air out. 
and we can start putting the tire back on. And when you guys are flushing or pressing the brakes and getting the air out of the little piston, make sure that this reservoir doesn't drop to where it starts sucking air on this area. Otherwise, you start pushing air through the system from here back into the pistons. So make sure that you bring this level back up if you're flushing or you're pushing more oil than this what's in the reservoir so they keep it topped off so there's no air going into the system. Well folks, hopefully this video was useful and helpful how to replace the rear wheel brake cylinder from a 91 to 99 Toyota Tercel or a 92 to 99 Toyota Paseo. And so this is pretty simple. You can do it at home. Just take your time and I'll make sure that you buy the part that you need for even the driver or passenger side. And with that said, folks, for our friends who are watching our video and haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you like our video, give us a thumbs up, share it, and we'll see you soon with more videos here on our channel, El Chano Jose.